Good afternoon, and welcome to another Super Secret Project sketch. This is Eric Whalen from Super Secret Project X, and uh, this is the end of summer, or getting there at least, and I tell you what, it is nice out there. I am glad that things have uh, ceased to be as hot as they were. Oh, okay. So I started uh, started down the season of Super Friends with Jaina of the Wonder Twins. Um, I have changed my mind somewhat on the Wonder Twins. I used to hate them as a kid. You know, because even as a kid I could tell that they just jumped these characters in. You know, and the real heroes of Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and blah, blah, blah. Even as a kid, I could tell. Um, but, you know, their, their powers were gitchy. I hated their monkey. I do. I still don't, li I still don't like Gleek. Um, there's little... He, the, we, we finally had one moment where he was useful. The rest of the time, he's just... <sighs> he's just the... He's, I, I'm annoyed by him because... When they have the episodes, the only reason why he's there is to do the, what, 15 second closing, everyone Laps. stand and laugh and put their hands on their hips and yep. look at, look at old Gleek, he's the Gleekiest, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, really I not didn't perfect for him being there than for them having a, the teens having a space pet, which was yep. popular during that time, and it's really yeah. not. Yeah, well, it's like, you look at Space Ghost uh, Blip. And there's a couple times where they won because of Blip. Blip actually did something really impressive a couple times. Right. Uh, so far, Gleek has only done one thing, and it was good. With that being said, I'm all for Gitchy uh, Space Teens, and I really don't see them as teens. They're not drawn as teens, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like the earlier version of Super Friends where they had, like, the teen characters with, like, that super mutt character and... You know, they looked like teens to me. Um, the Wonder Twins? I don't care what you say. They don't look like teenagers to me. Uh, they, they look like sexy uh, uh, 70s Vulcan characters, which I'm all for. Um, you know, I mean, they're ultra cutie, but they're all, they're, they always are drawn, like, really beautifully formed and stuff, and unless, of course, the animation goes downhill... When the animation goes downhill, even Superman don't look good. Um, but Jaina is just like, well, she is, she's like this super cute Vulcan character. <laughs> it's like they're, it's, I, to me, it looked like they were just like, oh, just make them Vulcans, but, you know, dress them up and give them superpowers. That's, that's what they look like to me. That's, that's why I, I think that they're, uh, they're kind of fun. Um, actually, I, I kind of don't mind Zan. As much as I thought I would, but Jaina is she's fun. Her powers are good, and my lead has chosen this exact moment to run out. Check that out. Yep, it's just being a jerk. There we go. Good lead. So uh, I always liked Jaina as a kid because she turned into the animals and stuff. And Zan, I was always like. Really, dude? Like, every once in a while, it was like, turn into a puddle, and then somebody would slip or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. The rest of the time, it was it was just like, I'll turn into, a, like, an ice rocket. And then Jaina would turn into, like, you know, a buzzard, and then the buzzard would get in the ice rocket. And you're just kind of going like, couldn't you guys have just gotten onto Batman's helicopter? This is all just very convoluted, you know? <laughs> like, my favorite one, uh, I think they had to get out of the way of a laser. Which required them to take three steps to the left. That's it. That's all they had to do. The laser wasn't on a turret. They just had to literally go, whoop, and they would have been out of the way. So they they did the whole Wonder Twins power, activate, form of, and the whole time I'm just going like, there's a laser, it's going to shoot at you. Just step out of the It took them longer to transform and do their thing than it would have stepped out of the way. So... <laughs> That bugged me. That bugged me. <laughs> I, just, just, I just never cared for them too much because, I mean, the whole Wonder Twin power... Uh, it was weird. Cheer, well, the, the whole che like cheer thing and well, the, uh, the announcing chant, whatever. 
Wonder I Twin remember, powers activate. Yeah, I remember like yep. saying that plenty of times. My my sisters and brothers said it because we all watched it and stuff sure. together and all that. And hearing it on we were hearing it on the playground when I grew up and all. So it actually so it was catchy. It's just oh yeah, it was great. I just did not like their their characters were just kind of lame when I was a kid because I'm like okay yeah. you can turn into a you can turn into an animal you can fly wherever you need to go you can turn into water things that I know. really don't make any sense for what you need to do. Like, okay, bad guys are coming after you. All right, turn into a giant grizzly bear, and then you turn into like an ice dagger. You rip them apart, rip them apart, and then stab them in the eye. No, I just wanted to see the, the, the you know, Jaina turn into the bear. And then Zan would jump into her hands and she starts doing like the... You know, I'm gonna cut you. Ah! I just there, there was stuff they could have done that would have been really funny. Like, you know, and every once in a while they really did pull off something clever. But most of the time, I, I did. I had problems with their shtick. Yeah, I mean, I, but the shtick was fun. I would love to see them done, and again, not doing the adult gore, blah blah blah. But like no. see them with an like with a more uh, older take. And like I said, for me, I just want to see the Justice League Unlimited kind of version, like that. Yeah, yeah, in which they. They sort did they wait did they do that for Young Young Justice? No, they didn't do that on Young Justice. I don't Justice, remember no. them doing that, no. Oh, okay. Not that my memory's great anymore. It's kinda of shot actually. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah, they, no, that was that was um was that, no, there was the one where they the sort of Apache chief character, the the clones that they made. Mm. That that, oh, that um, was kinda like that was sort of like what they did. Yeah, they they uh, they basically tried to do Super Friends but fix it, and um, yeah, they were all based off of yeah. you know sort of the the made up characters. But they no wait no yeah. they did do yeah. the Wonder Twins. It was those two very white pale yeah. ones. Um, I actually thought they were neat, and they did make them hyper dangerous, which was great. But I think they actually could have made them look more like the Wonder Twins because I. I realize they're cheesy, but they're just the right level of cheesy, you know? Probably, though, since those characters were, like, different, they probably were differently licensed, so they probably could, could get... It could be, yeah. yeah. Or it maybe they just wanted to step away from the from that and not be a direct, okay, give it to you, sure. here it is. But, um, On the same note, it, I wouldn't have blamed them at all if they had gone in with... Um, like, for example, and the character that they had come up with in Justice League Unlimited for Apache Chief mm -hmm. was a really nice design. Yeah. And the character was really well done. But I, and, and, okay, I'm going to have to have, like, a native, like, tribal person tell me. See, to me, I'm, I'm all for the cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, Apache Chief does not sound at all offensive to me. But I could also be hugely wrong. So maybe that's why mm -hmm. that, that was done that way. Yeah. But there's nobody, there's nobody that can complain about the Wonder Twins. That, that's why I was like, and, and they were really far off from the original uh, design. And man, I, I tell you what, re-watching the Wonder Twins, when they were drawn really right... I get it. They look like they were in a juicy fruit commercial. I'm not. I. I, I get. They were so hokey and like sparkly. And but the, the, then I started going like, wait, no. This is actually the few characters in all of DC that you could actually do that with. Yeah. They're aliens. Maybe their whole emotional uh, and mental perspective on reality is this super duper unbelievably cutie, happy, smiley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it's, I kind of like re-fell in love with a little bit of that when I was re-watching it, you know? Yeah, maybe they're like, they, they come from in front of just like weird codependent people or something like that. Well, you know, it's like, like I said, they're sort of like, they're sort of like sexy Vulcans. So, you know, in Planet Vulcan, nobody has emotions. Maybe on, oh, I am blanking on their, their home planet. Um, I don't remember. Xandor, Exxon... Exxon Valdez, their home planet, Exxon Valdez. Well, I am so why. sorry, that is not right. <laughs> well, that's why their home planet exploded it's, into oil and poisoned everything. Now they're all just delusionally happy, brain damage from the petroleum. Yeah. Uh, let's find out where their planet is from. Uh, let's see. 
I just I feel Exor. Thank you. I knew there was an E and an X, but after that it was like or or a Z, yeah. maybe a P. X O R or also spelled E X O R. But yeah, just you know, a, a little bit. I actually enjoyed them more as an adult than I did uh, as a kid, because I kind of saw them as like this hokey, cheesy gitch that started working more. What really I did not care for was it, there was sort of lazy writing when it came to the use of their powers. So most of the time, I there was a handful of times where they didn't use it, need to use their powers at all. Like, you could just tell, like, the director was like, just make it work, and the writer was like, this doesn't make sense. All right, storyboard it in anyway. Well, here we go. Here's some interesting stuff. All hmm. right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Hanna-Barbera animator Daryl McNeil recalls the twins were created by Norman Maurer, the Super Friends series developer and story editor. They were originally called Dick and Jane, and their sidekick was Mighty Monkey before finally becoming Zan, Jaina, and Gleek. Mighty Monkey. I actually might have preferred that over Gleek. Uh, at least then I could have known I was supposed to, you know, be angry at it. <laughs> the names Zan and Jaina derived from Edgar Rice Burroughs' characters Tarzan and his romantic interest Jane. Jane. Which is kind yeah. of creepy. Uh, according to McNeil, originally Zan had plastic man powers and Jaina could transform into anything, not just animals. But they were scaled back to their present powers as of maybe other super friends, even Superman, Seem almost superfluous. <laughs> yeah, when I was re-watching the Super Friends Superpower show, which is really hard to watch, um, they had Firestorm in there, and since he could just do all this, like, like zzzz, change things into things, I just kept going, like, can't the rest of the people just go home at this point? This dude is so st sickeningly powerful that he was, like, no fun to watch. At least with the Wonder Twins, they pulled up, and this is where I liked them. This is where I think they did a really good job. They wrote in moments where they couldn't do the wing, you know, so they were always like, I can't quite activate, you know, and they're like, oh no, that's, a, that's fun, that's a good shtick. You know, they can't, they, they can't do like, Wonder Twin powers activate, it has to be, I guess their, their receivers are in their knuckles, I guess. I don't know what that is. Oh, was it the rings? I thought they had rings. That, yeah. Might be rings. I'm I'm old, and I don't remember anything anymore. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Oh no, the pair can activate their superpowers by touching hands and saying the phrase "Wonder Twin Powers Activate." Okay, so it was just a. It was a see, I thought it was something. just their hands. Yeah, so I'm going to guess it's actually their knuckles, because there were times where they could just do, and they didn't. Which is funny because the, <laughs> the picture they're showing of them. They have their gloves, they, they have gloves on, but then they take their gloves off and they're doing the knuckle, they're, they're giving the nuts. So I'm like... They're giving the nuts. <laughs> Wonder Nuts power, activate! <laughs> Alright, let's see what else. Uh, Jaina's distinctive hairdo was based on that of an animation checker at Hanna-Barbera. I was while, wondering. While the, point, the pointy ears were inspired by the character Spock from Star Trek. Obviously. I mean, Zan even looks like a cuter, gitchier Spock. Actually, the twins' personalities were heavily based on Donnie and Marie Osmond, who were very popular That does popular not surprise me. Which I'm actually fine with. You know, when I was younger and angstier and all that BS, um, that sort of stuff kind of just, you know, got me. But now I'm going like, well, but that offers like a really nice sort of spectrum of like characters. You know, so if you ever had like the dark and brooding Batman, you needed characters as cheesy as these two. That's that's what that's what I um, actually kind of liked about them. They were just like so like you you expected them to wink and make those little binky noises, bink bink. I mean they were just it was like they were like they evolved to be kind of softly obnoxious and cute, and that's I actually sit there going like actually that's kind of cool now that I think about it, and I and I can't exactly say why it just was like I just like variety so I'm like. And I still say it. I don't care what anyone says. They're not teenagers. They don't look like teenagers. There's nothing about them. I mean, Zan is... I mean, he's not like he's not like Hulk huge, but he's a big dude. I mean, yeah, I get it. He's wearing tights and stuff, but he's still, like, really beefy. And uh, Jaina is... 
Uh, she's drawn like Firestar. She's just, she's got all the curves and all the stuff. Which and is funny because Firestar's supposed to be a teenager too. Like those. That's what I. Yeah, all of them. I'm like, she cool. wasn't drawn like a teenager. Okay, she was drawn like maybe 20. You know, like right when the girls really start filling out. And <laughs> you just go like, uh. Well, I'm good with it, but I'm just saying they don't want one. They're different. They, they're, everything developed differently. But anyway, no, yeah, but but you know what I'm saying is they're they look like like pinup characters, which I'm good with. I'm just saying that doesn't read as teenager to me. Well, maybe it's teenagers in their time, from, from their, their teenagers planet. from their planet. <laughs> I'm like, wow, how many X's in X are again? Two. <laughs> really? Well, that's that's decent. Hmm, <laughs> that's funny. A little wrong, but funny. Okay, let me make sure that's... Okay, they have the... thought that didn't look right. I'm not sure what's happening with the Facebook thing that hasn't popped up, so... Oh, the what now? Whatever, is something's not happening with Facebook, so we're not getting a Facebook stream. Huh, weird. Yeah. Oh well, that's a, that's a shame. Maybe try restarting it. The old app. Uh, it would be it's something on there because I mean, if, if anything would pop up, it would have been over here too. Really? And we're getting a very low lag on here, so. Uh, according to this, everything's pretty good. That's probably at their end. Figures we might actually get some. Oh, we do. We've got at least one person. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Which um, might be, well, no, it's not. No, it's, it, that's always one, yeah. which is uh, our always faithful viewer, <laughs> our TV. <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers. Activate. Form of great streaming services. Yeah, that was always the, that was always just the thing is I is I I was always for clever fun things happening and I think that's what caught me when I was a kid when they would just do like the sort of substandard versions of their shtick and I think that's what really caught me because the one time Gleek did something good I actually was sitting in the lazy boy just kind of you know, getting ready to fall asleep and stuff, and then he did the one actual thing he's ever done. And I sat up and went, Hey, honey, Gleek just saved the world! You know, kind of a thing. And it was actually a nice, clever little piece of writing. You know, they were caught in some cages at a space circus. Wonder, you know, Super Friends is what it is. And, they, and the Wonder Twin powers can't do the, you know, because the cages are holding them apart. And, um... Gleek looks over, and there's like a, a space rhino or a space... It was a space elephant. And he just grabs his bucket full of nuts and looks at the elephant and shakes it at the elephant, then, th which was funny, throws it at Zan. So Zan gets hit by a bucket full of peanuts. And then the space elephant rampages, rips open its cage, rips open Zan's cage, and Zan's all freaking out and stuff. And I'm kind of going like, this is much better than it normally is. And he's all like ticked at Gleek. And he's like, Gleek, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And Gleek's just looking at him like, dude, the cage is open. I mean, he didn't say that, but that was the expression. And then his hand looks at the cage. Like, Good job, Gleek. And I just sat there like my mouth was hanging open going like, I'd like that blue space monkey if he did that all the time. <laughs> that was the first. And it was like. 12 episodes or something in it was really far in and I was like okay look I'm still going to cheer for Blip Blip is the greatest space monkey he just is I, I don't know of a better space monkey um, but Gleek at that moment was good I thought I was like if, if you, they kept doing that and plus he had his like cheeky monkey little moments where he was just being a dork running around causing problems okay I'm good with that but most of the time, he just didn't do anything. And I was like, even as a kid, I was going like, oh, come on. I'm As a kid, I'm supposed to be laughing at this character. And I can't. <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to do it. 
I, get, I hope I wasn't a snob as a kid. What a horrible thing to say, right? As a child, I was a snob. I remember being, being that age and seeing you know, snotty brat kids. Well, the thing was, I remember I had some weird reactions to things. I honestly, I remember this. You remember that there was a Dragon's Lair cartoon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't remember much beyond it. I'll tell you why I don't. Because I was super excited that there was a Dragon's Lair cartoon. Mm -hmm. I thought the arcade machine was awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. The moment the show started, and he started actually talking, I freaking lost it. Because he's not supposed to talk. That's what kind of a ridiculously demented child I was. You know, I just loved that character so much. And he started talking, and I was like, -uh. <laughs> You ain't bringing words into his mouth. This is, this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, I had problems. Just realize, did you want the fan up? Just don't worry about it. Not used to making characters with this much hair coming off the back of their heads. Yeah, I don't think I was that picky by a lot of my I'm trying to think. I was picky about strange stuff like that. Like if I felt it just wasn't right for like the character or the show, I get it. It's it's ridiculous, but I, I just I just would have problems with it. Um, God, I think I just took cartoons too seriously even back then. I just I always loved them. Oh yeah, same here. Well, if I had if I had that. And so I, I I mean I was I was serious about my shows also. I mean I I've mentioned it before but I like got kicked out of a school play because of rescue rangers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Rescue Rangers came on at like four four thirty and the school play, I like after, after school that. and stuff, he had to stay for rehearsal. And I'm like, I don't want to miss my shows. And so I would, like... <laughs> Screw your play, I've got cartoons. Yeah, and so I would, like... I ain't making fun of that, I agree, actually. <laughs> you're enslaving children for the entertainment of adults. I see what you're doing. I'd rather go watch a cartoon. <laughs> Even back then, I, I, you know, I saw through their tricks, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Doesn't look deep enough. Let me see here. Yeah, she's got some serious hair on her. It's funny how we think of stuff as kids. 
all the stuff going on in the world, those were the things that were important. I mean, they were, but it'd be nice to go back to that. Oh, not much. I just did some clean up and realized that while I was yakking, some things were were kind of off, so I had to do some fixes. This would probably always turn out better if I wasn't talking, but then it would just be a chunky middle-aged dude drawing children's cartoons, not saying anything, which could look creepy. Um, <clears throat> It's stuff. super cute, but you wonder how she does it. <laughs> Alien stuff. <laughs> but it's funny, like, it's one of those hairstyles I didn't see much of until, um, um, get any Tadakoski, he, he likes that hairstyle on his women. <laughs> he did it for, um, the print for a, a princess, uh, what's her name, and Symbionic Titan. Mm. Um, um. Yeah, exactly. Blanky on her name. I feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and uh, she's a great character. And also, uh, same hairstyle for um, the one sister on, on the, the last last season of Samurai Jack. Oh, they, yeah. You know, when they made it for, when they put it on adults, when they made it for, for adults. Yeah, that last season was awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it actually should be up that we can actually watch on Netflix again, so... Yeah, they had the, the same, that same type of hairstyle. I loved how he went in and he just was like, I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to end Samurai Jack the way I want to. And it was just like dark and kind of ugly and weird and had an, had an end end to it. Like it was definitely done when they were finished telling the story and it was a sad ending <laughs> and just so good. You know, so interesting. Instead of just letting the series hang there and, you know, or, or the, which I, I think is ill-advised, trying to find an ending that all the fans will like because it's that's never going to happen. The fans will never agree, never in a million years, and no matter what you do, someone's going to be mad, so end it in an interesting way. You know? And as much as I, I wish that wasn't true, it's just true. It's the one thing that I've learned from every fandom I've ever been in. No, The moment you're really excited about something the, is the moment something is never going to be good enough. You know? Well, one of the uh, going through a lot of uh, people who are in, in the industry as far as like animation and, and uh, do portfolio reviews all that stuff and one of the echoing sentiments they have for people just trying to get into the into the industry is when it comes to portfolio re, uh, viewing and all that excuse me uh, just put in stuff that you like yeah. like if, don't try and impress, impress people with how you draw this or that they're like okay if you if you like certain characters that's cool but don't force yourself to draw those to draw those characters if you don't they're like just do what you like yeah. and do what you're good at 
and if you and those are just show showcase your talents basically and your and your highlights and that's the point of getting a job is showing them what you're good at and they're like if we if we see that you're a fit for us we will we will get you we will talk to you and we'll, we'll bring you in and stuff but they're like never never pull yourself down just to try and get a job well that, that's the thing is I do corporate level production just not in animation and stuff and yeah I'm proud of the fact that I do I am professionally an artist and I professionally do all the yakety shrackety but at the end of the day if you're working on something that you don't want to be working on it's dredge work it just is you know I can totally be proud of, of the work that I do but if it's on something that for example if I got football products I would just sit there like I was literally being like whipped with sticks there's just nothing about it that I'm ever going to like the best I can do is trick myself into thinking I'm working on barbarians or something which I've done a couple times but that requires a lot of coffee and a huge amount of very loud heavy metal um because it's just it's just boring to me to other people fine people enjoy what they enjoy I just so if you get stuff that you don't want to work on you know you set a portfolio up just to get a job and it's they think that you want to work on blank and then it's not actually what you want to be doing mm -hmm. well not only that but it's if you're it's not it's going to show it, it, unless you are like so good some people are that yeah. way though for the most part, it's like if you're working on something that you don't like, it's going, it is going to show. Yeah, the back of her head is just driving me nuts. Probably because I just got a bunch of junk there that needs to be cleaned up. Now look at that, got all kinds of junk on the back of Jana's head. Got to clean it right up. It sounds bad. It sounds bad. You know, Firestar is another good character, come to think of it. It's funny, when I went back and rewatched Spider-Man and his amazing friends, there were moments where I literally hit pause and went, pause, wow. <laughs> we don't do animation like this anymore. Good, bad, don't matter, it's just a fact. This is, we don't do specifically this, because she was drawn really hot in some, in some uh, frames. You're like, what? That dude was lonely when he did this. When he did that sequence, look at her. Woo! And then early on, on the the earlier episodes of um, Super Friends, where they had the Wonder Twins, and when everything was drawn pretty well, uh, there was a couple shots of Jane who was going like, "Wow." <laughs> you mean like with uh, how on He-Man when they would draw Tila? <laughs> yeah. Like that was yeah. It was when I went back and rewatched He-Man. I was like, there was the scenes where she would jump in, and then like her butt would be right yeah, in the screen. I was going like, you see, they understood little boys. Um, well, the, well, the guy who who designed her, he he had he made no no yeah. secret of what he liked he's the like, women. Yeah. She's like, she's hot. Yeah, I'm like, his, she's his, hot. In his character design, he's like, oh yeah, of course I made her that way. He's like, who? Why wouldn't I? I'm just like, hey, you, you look he's, like he's, a creepy, pervy uncle. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm a creepy, pervy uncle, too, because I just end up looking at character designs going like, you know, you can make uh, ugly characters, and you could make plain Jane kind of characters, and I think they're all legitimate. But you just, just for the sake of saving someone's feelings or something, remove the sexy characters? Why? Yeah, I'm, I'm, they shouldn't all be that way, sure, but... I was saying he was the, the curvy, cur, curvy uncle. Curvy uncle, wow. The, 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 curvy, the curvy uncle. I was saying the <laughs> that creepy, sounds like a <clears throat> euphemism. I was saying the curvy, creepy uncle because the way he was he was presenting it, he was doing the whole, like... <laughs> kinda, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah, he, yeah okay, he was, I see what you're was, saying. 
he was kind of being Uncle Touchy. <laughs> <laughs> being old Uncle Touchy. Yeah, and, and I, I, I have no problems with, with curvy chicks. I have no problems with, with hot people drawing. Like, I, I, love, I love drawing curvy women. I love drawing women because women have curves in there. Well, girls are pretty. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, well the, the curvy thing, period, because that's an art aesthetic. Mm-hmm. It's like bulgy, muscly dudes. Yeah. I like drawing, They're more fun to draw. Yeah, I like drawing shapes. I like, yeah, exactly I like the, right. Yeah, I like the adventure of drawing shapes. But it's like, you know. <laughs> it's what's more fun, a curved line or a straight line? <laughs> Depending on who you Curved are. line, always. <laughs> well, it depends on Unless who you it's are. a laser. Well, so if, you, if you get that, that's, that staunch like person that does all the straight line stuff, the, the engineering artist. Oh, sh- well, yeah, no, sure, on like mecha stuff or whatever, sure. I mean, straight lines aren't wrong. I'm just saying, it's like, people are like, why are you always drawing characters bulgy or curvy or booby or whatever? And I just go like, because it's literally more fun. Yeah. You just draw like a, mm, mm, mm. it's like, mm. but then you have big bulging shapes on top of big bulging shapes. It's so much more fun to draw that way. It just, it, at least for me, it just is. Because I've tried drawing stuff like, you know, that really straight, um, simple, and it, it's okay. It's just, it just isn't much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just not your thing. Yeah, I mean, I could see some people out there being like, I'm all about the straight lines. I'm like, right on, dude, you, you ignore the curvilinear stuff. You go right for the, the ruler. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, it, it's, it's like on eyes. You know, you can draw eyes with very straight lines, like a uh, Dragon Ball Z style, for example. Nothing wrong with that. It's what the fans love. The guy loved to do it. It's not my thing because I just look at it and I go, "There's just too many straight lines there." I just don't, you know, visually I don't care for it as much, and um, hand-wise drawing it, I just don't care for it as much. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you get, it's like, well, why do you put big boobs on characters? You just go like, well. Because circles are fun to draw. No, seriously, honestly, they're just more fun to draw. And people can judge it one way or the other, but it's just like, circles are fun. Big round shoulders, circles are fun. Big round eyes, circles are fun. Big bulgy barbarian dudes, circles are fun. (laughs) They feel good to draw. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things a lot of... uh, non-artists they they don't understand they sort of assume things i guess yeah it's it's like they the the whole thing of what, what, what you what you said was uh it feels good to draw it does a lot of people would not understand that concept because they're just like oh were you just putting lines out on paper what do you mean it feels good and for like, a lot of people yeah they probably they, don't realize it yeah. feels something yeah right it, it's they don't understand the the tech well, yeah, basically the tactile feeling, not only not only the tactileness, but the emotional. Well, there's uh, also just the construction of it. Yeah. The, the construction has more form to it when you're dealing with circles and blobs and yada yada, and, and as compared to just lines. Mm-hmm. There, those, are two, those, those are two different things in my head, and like the lips here, you can do straight lines if you really want to. I ain't going to judge you. That's your thing, that's your thing, but... The curved lines are so much more fun to draw. They feel so much better going down on the page. It's like, well, do you draw um, flat-chested, thin-limbed characters? Well, yeah, mm-hmm. but it—they're just not as fun. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just not. You know, and it's just like it has nothing to do with sexy or not. Sure, that can be a part of it, but it's just nice going in and being like. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, it's just like, ah, I feel, whoop, you know, and you just get some nice kind of curvy lines in there, and it's just infinitely more fun. Mm-hmm. You just go, shht, shht, shht. Yeah, yeah, that's important. You know, you need lines on buildings. You've got mecha stuff. You've got lasers. You've got all sorts of stuff that require straight lines. And yeah, you want straight lines to be in contrast to curved lines. So, you know, they can play off of each other. Like these lines right here, nearly straight lines. Now these, you know, and that's that's important to make the other curvier lines feel more curvy. So it's it's it all plays together, but 
I just look at a lot of stuff that's drawn sexy and I go, they're having fun mm -hmm. on more than one level. Because it's just, you look at it and you go, the round tummies and the bulgy muscle and the blah, 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 and, the blah, 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 and you're just like, they're having fun. You can see it. Right. You know, and so I, when I looked at her, her, I mean, look how many curves are just in this design. I mean, so I looked at her, I'm going like, you know what, I'm going to draw her. She's, she's a fun design. And, and plus she's kind of, kind of a fun character that, it's funny, I, I, I looked up the model sheet for her, which there's not a ton of them, there's just a couple. Mm -hmm. And the subculture based on the Wonder Twins is kind of interesting because some of their alternate versions of them popped up and I was like, oh, let's see what people are doing with this. And some of which are going like, wow, they it looks like a lot of them just went as far away from the original source material as humanly possible. While I was going like, all right, I admit the original source material needed some tweaking, but they were kind of fun because they were gitchy, silly characters, you know? Yeah, I know, like, was it, I want to say, early 2000s, they tried, they did a, they came in the comic It was a comic around, series, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, they came in after, um, after the, uh, the Crisis series. They brought them in and made them kind of like the, the jeans and t-shirts wearing teens and stuff, and... I kind of like the, the outfits in a sense, but on the same note, it was, if they, it was, yeah, they, they, they made them the extreme tears. Yeah, I was about to say they, they looked angsty, mm -hmm. which was kind of like, yeah, that works sometimes, and it works really well, but just all the time, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of like, I'm starting to get a whole new appreciation for Fruit Pie Batman. <laughs> You know, after all of the super grim Batman stuff, you're kind of like, yeah, some of it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. But all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Can't I have him being a clever detective again? Who well, like, knows a little bit of, you know, street foo? <laughs> That's what we were saying last time. I was like, as, as, as much as I uh, appreciate all the Batman movies that's been out and all of the... Like, yeah, there's been some good ones. Both animated and, and live action. Also so, like, some good ones. I, I want to see, like, where he started from, Detective Batman, like Detective Comics. I want to see Batman be the detective. Yeah, because it's nice that he's got gadgets and armor and stuff, but the original core of the character was he was smart. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and he was street smart. He figured stuff out. You know, he was like a secret uh, night ninja detective that could also get into a fight and stuff. And yet yeah, there was some gadgets too. And it was just, it was, you know, it, and not to say that that's exactly always my favorite version, but I like seeing him smart. It's kind of like with the Wonder Twins. All well, the original source material for those characters is super friends. So I kind of like seeing them being like ridiculously optimistic and you know, you know, and admittedly, I think Zan needed some work because his powers just didn't always come off so hot. Right. Jan, uh, Jane, Jan, Jaina, oh, um, almost always had like you know because it was a big animal or something, and it always kind of worked. Gleek, we just won't talk about Gleek. Him and Donald Martin just like shoot. Yeah. It's like he's kind of on that list of characters that you wanted to be awesomer. Mm -hmm. You know, like you could just see the potential, but you just they just they just whatever whatever reason just didn't do it for me. Like they could just be the the biggest Gleek fans out there and good good for them. I just, just kind of go like mm. I'll go to Blip. I think Blip is cuter. I think he's more functional. I think he's funnier cuz he sounded like a monkey instead of like some kind of a crazy gibbering space monster. Which was actually kind of awesome, just not as awesome as Blip. I'm trying to remember if cause I remember the word Gleek. I remember hearing that when I was a kid. That meant when you were talking, and then like the the errant like spit, yep. <laughs> the saliva stream that would come out of your mouth. That was called a Gleek. So I'm like, wait, it was that. Yeah. Did Did you have kids trained to do that in your school? That would just sniper people with their saliva. We did. No, Frickin' cleakers. <laughs> there may have been kids who could do that on purpose. I don't know. Oh, we, we, had, we had sniper schools in, in northern Michigan. People would just walk by and go, 
and then it hits you right in the face. Oh, yeah. No, I. there's a reason why I don't like people. But it was really impressive. You were like, wow, you're a jerk, and that was impressive. <laughs> no, no, it's in the area I grew up in. You do that on purpose, and so you're liable to get your face popped. So. <laughs> well, the thing was is the people that did that were the people that would punch you in the face. Yeah, exactly. So we just had, like, weaponized bullies where I was at. Yeah. Fortunately, not many of them were homicidal, but there was a lot of them. I guess it was the cold winters that just bred such sort of jerk mentalities. I'm not sure what it was, but... I don't know. I mean, uh, it is where I mean, our winters were cold, but not as brutal, but we still had plenty of jerks. I think it's just jerks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we had jerks that knew how to use body fluids. <laughs> There's a, There's a certain level that. of <laughs> awfulness to that. Well, you guys may have had that, but we just had people who would just literally grab and spit on you, so. <laughs> oh, we had those too. We had those too. They, those were the ones that just, you know, would also just shove you and then kick you. Um, but I'm just talking about the ones that were like doing it, you know, almost almost like super secret spy bullying. It was just, you, you jerks. You, know? you amazingly skilled jerks. You know? But yeah, it's actually funny. It's, I'm, not up, I'm not against characters being updated. Because sometimes you get some really neat new stuff. But I actually like this design. She's kind of it, she's kind of like the the DC version of like like the Smurfs or something. I mean, she's just so like like ridiculously cute and sugary. Like I actually want her costume to actually have that sparkly glitteriness to it. <laughs> you know, lavender and glitter. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, she could pull it off. So could Zan, come to think of it. Bulging muscles and glitter. Go Zan. <laughs> you know? That's true. It's funny, the moment I was sitting there watching it, and it just occurred to me, my God, they're basically cute, mildly sexy Vulcans. <laughs> With a very questionable set of powers. <laughs> I actually kind of like the original idea. I think I might have liked Zan better if he did have, like, Plastic Man powers. Well, I think I actually would really honestly like him better. Well, I mean, they already had Plastic Man, so they couldn't really do much of that. Yeah, but they didn't have Plastic Man on the show. Then they, at least they could have, like, a space version of Plastic Man. Mm-hmm. And, his, and his giant ape sister that could like th- th- throw buses well, like I said the, the initial like they were they were just, pretty, just they would have been just pretty much overpowered so. well see my thought is is if you just take their powers and you reduce it down and you put limitations like the Wonder Twin Powers activate that's actually something that I like as goofy as it is I'm like no it's a Superman you always have to go for kryptonite so it's kind of like eh it's kryptonite again guess what how are we going to stop Superman eh kryptonite at least with them you're like well how many ridiculous situations can they get into where they just can't touch their hands together there's like a shtick you could form and it's kind of fun you know superman it's always like oh uh, then that's kryptonite oh okay. that's kryptonite kryptonite horseshoes out of nowhere just cracked me up that one time we were watching and like whatever horse character like what it was like they were the character was riding it on the horse and had the horse rolls up on its on its hind legs and Superman falls down. Oh no, kryptonite horseshoes. I know, it's like, what? <laughs> no, I'm all for cheesy bad writing if it's still entertaining, like if it's like self-aware. But when it's just like, you guys just got lazy there. <laughs> oh, the one that got me was, was with Wonder Woman. She was, um, she had gotten like, that was like she was fighting Medusa because it was like I think it was like the Greek 
they had to go through the Greek challenges because Hera was jealous because Hera. <laughs> and so it was like they sent, like, Superman was battling, of what, a minotaur. That's what it was. I think it was like he had, like, a, he had, yeah, I think that's when he had the kryptonite horseshoes or whatever. Um, it was like, yeah, the, a minotaur um, and whatever, various things. But Wonder Woman had to fight Medusa. And she couldn't look at her, of course, but something happened where she was, she couldn't move, she was either tied up or she couldn't move, and her magic lasso was, uh, was, was, wasn't, she it had gotten lost or something. And so, while she's, she's like, I know, I'll grab, like, my lasso will, will do this, and the lasso telepathically goes down. Oh, come on. And squiggles its way like a snake and defeats the foe, and... I'm like... Seriously? Like, whoa. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite episodes of the Thundercats. I'm always a sucker for uh, temples with traps. And so they literally have an episode where a couple of them get caught in like this thieves, you know, uh, a hideout that's filled with traps and monsters and classical sort of Dungeons and Dragons kind of cheesy stuff. It's sort of fun. And so you have a bunch of sort of silly, fun moments. And then one of them, they couldn't get up this booby trap set of stairs, which was so fun up until that point. <laughs> and then Lino goes, well, thank, th you know, thank Thundera, my sword is also a pole vault. And you're like, <laughs> what? So oh, come bad. on. That <laughs> didn't happen before or since. You've never seen it do any kind of shape-shifting outside of its normal kind of thing that it does mm -hmm. it was just they had a great idea for a scene and then went we don't know how to end this let's just have him pole vault over and you're like come on look even as a kid i rolled and i do remember watching that episode because i liked the uh, octopus monster and i was i thought that was one of the cooler episodes and i remember just going like <laughs> really it i mean <laughs> yes basically it's like uh, come on now Seriously, I I don't mind some I don't mind some cheese, but if it's just reeking of bad writing, you're just like, you just come on, you just told me a joke and then uh, couldn't figure out the punchline, so then you just kind of made fart noises with your armpit. Why did the chicken cross the road? That's one of the reasons why so many kids had eight, like, had like ADD and ADHD because all this stuff didn't make sense, and we just, and we just were told to accept it. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> why are you doing that? I don't know. <laughs> well, to be fair, I have moments in reality now where, with everything going on in the world, I just go like, "Why not? Sure. Um, okay." You know, so I can I can kind of see where you're coming from with that, and with me it was you know I, and I wasn't that bright of a kid. I'm not so sure I'm too bright of an adult, but <laughs> this one's kind of cute. I might actually do a um, an inking in a full color of this one. Yeah, I wasn't so sure I was going to get that sugariness to her, but I think I, I did pretty good. Yeah, that's not too far off. All right, I think I'm probably, I think I'm probably pretty good, good for now. For sketch, I think that's pretty good. All right. Thank you for joining us. I know we had one person stick with us the, almost the whole time. Thank you for showing up. I think that may have been on TV. Hmm? <laughs> that may have been the TV. Oh. <laughs> However, maybe. Thank yes. you anyway for yes. watching. Well, let's see if I can get my Mr. Rogers bit down. Not that I'm going to change my shoes. Oh. It all went into the box. It didn't wrestle me at all. It's a good omen.
That's a good omen. All right. Well, you'll have yourself a good week, and uh, we will catch you next Saturday. Um, and if you are still interested in watching stuff, uh, friend me, or uh, all my stuff is up on YouTube, and blah, blah, blah. Stay safe, stay hydrated. Yep, all that good stuff. Wear it's been a long week. I don't have much energy left. <laughs> Wear a mask. Enjoy the, 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 long, the extended long holiday.